also namaste. You can see my day ends the way it begins. Working with the healing chi on the body. Learning as a master through yoga and qigong through martial arts. How to project the chi, bring it into the body, take away all the blocks and just bring peace, happiness, good health, well-being, 100% through the body. So it's very interesting that my day ends exactly the way it begins. And perhaps that's part of the beauty of aging. As you get older, you keep fine-tuning your life and fine-tuning your life until you find those things that work those things that keep you healthy, those things that keep you going even into your 70s and your 80s so that you remain strong, you remain vital and active and really health is absolutely the new wealth. If you have your health, you have it all. So that's why I'm such a stickler about this, why I continue to try to put it out there as a key to life, the importance of a practice. In Qigong, you know, we reach out to the stars, to the sky, to the trees, to nature, and you start gathering all of that healing power. This has been used in the Orient for, we have evidences of this 20,000 years. They have been in this process. They knew that all of us have a certain power to gather the chi and to pull that chi and own it, use it into the body and find ways of working with digestion so that your digestion has a better flow, all of your, the inner workings of your organs, your blood pressure can be regulated by clouds and you find your energization the reason why I have a lot of energy is I'm pulling it from the stars, I'm pulling from the moon, I'm pulling from the sun, I'm pulling from the trees. And this ancient science that I fell upon as a grad student, basically studying archaeology in very esoteric places like Beijing and Madras and Lhasa in Tibet, um, I gathered all of the information, the teaching of these great masters, and I've honed it into my own personal practice that's called sadhana. Every day you have your sadhana, the things that you do to keep you healthy and fit. So my day starts out, I'm doing yoga, sun salutation, and then I go into the qigong, the gathering of the energy for health, for flexibility, so that as you grow older, I have no arthritic pain. I don't have those sort of things that hold other people back from really enjoying their golden years of life. You don't have to age in ways that people normally age. You can stay really eternally young and you become a master. I, I remember when I was a young guy and uh, growing up in a small Kansas town, I thought I was a big fish in a small pond. You know? And then my parents sent me, in, when I was 14 years old, to study in Paris. And I studied at the Sorbonne. I studied at the University of Switzerland as a young man, 16 years old, at the university. If you can imagine, of Switzerland, traveling throughout Europe on my bicycle. I rode the entire length of the Rhine staying in castles, spent my weekends in Versailles, and, you know, used the library all the time at Oxford and Cambridge. These things made me realize that I was truly an international person. I was not just a kid growing up in America and Kansas, but I realized that I was a citizen of this planet, a citizen of this world. And I started searching for the most noble things that man had accomplished. And this means I was searching in the Louvre, looking through all of the art through the ages, going to the Vatican Museum and looking through the Vatican and 
looking at all the gorgeous art that's there, all the history that's there, and traveling throughout the world. In 130 countries I've traveled now, and that's also including the Orient, Asia, Africa, Brazil, Venezuela, um, throughout South America, throughout Africa, Australia, even to remote places like Fiji and Borneo, uh, to Antibes and um, to some of the more renowned places in the world of learning like Athens and Ephedra and Istanbul and Algiers. All these places I went looking for the man's noblest accomplishments. As an archaeologist, I spent my time going up and down the Nile, going to Kamombo, going to Edfu, climbing through tombs in Valley of the Kings, going into the tomb of King Tut repeatedly, 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 uh, writing down the hieroglyphics, trying to decipher the story. And I realized that I was, in fact, a citizen of this world. My Veldanchaun, my worldview exploded, and I was no longer just a small child in a Kansas town, but I had a world perspective. The best places in the world were my home. I had a, an apartment in Paris, an apartment in Madras, a, a, a beautiful house in Key West, in Taos. I, I was living throughout the planet in the places that really, really gave me energy. And now I can say, uh, at this stage in life, I consider myself a citizen of the world. But now, through Qigong and yoga, my practices in meditation, the entire universe is my homeland. And all people, all men and women, animals, even the trees of the forest have become my brothers and sisters. It, it's, a, it's a more of a universal perspective that a person has. As you get older, you continue to fine tune your life until you become a true master of the art of living and your life becomes an endless stream of creative processes that help your health, your mental well-being, your sense of inner peace, and you develop a perspective that could only be called universal. So as you go on this journey with me, I think you will find that we are citizens of the universe and the processes of the Qigong are a way of embracing that, pulling that into your being and bringing about a state of universal consciousness in which suddenly the entire universe, even beyond this planet, becomes your homeland, becomes a place of consciousness and truth for you. And you become at oneness and peace with all things and all people. So, thank you for coming on this evening journey with me. Um, as you can see, at nighttime, the stars, the moon, the trees, the birds all sleeping, <laughs> all of these things bring about a powerful chi that you can bring that inner chi or energy into your body and use it for your own personal healing, for your health and well-being, and for all of those things that will sustain your journey on this planet. So thank you for joining me this evening uh, on my Qigong journey. And I'm getting ready here to complete my practice in my garden here at Belmont Manor. And then I will do usually an hour of Zazen, Zen meditation, before I have a very peaceful night's rest. Then you wake up and you do the same thing all over again the next day. <laughs> so from day to day, life is pretty much the same. 
But really what you're doing is fine-tuning your practice and how important it is to have a daily spiritual practice that will keep you grounded and centered in your being and will keep you peaceful as you go further and deeper into your senior years. It becomes critically important and you'll find this as you get older to keep yourself in a very, very peaceful state so that you don't have to deal with things like high blood pressure and organ failure and all the things that can go wrong with the body if you continue to stress it out, if you continue to lead a life where there is no chance for real rest and real peace, real relaxation, and just feeling comfortable in your own skin, a sense of oneness with yourself. So, from my home to yours, I'm wishing you peace in this beautiful full moon night and hoping that all of you will take time to develop your practice so that you too will realize that your health, your happiness, and your peace are your true wealth in life. And that these years of your life that you have left to live, you can lead in peaceful, meditative, powerfully creative, energized, healthful, all of those wonderful qualities that will give you a really rich and full life. So, namaste and have a beautiful day. Thank you.